Of course, we invoked Marx when we told ourselves that intellectuals were merely a superstructure from which the revolution couldn't emanate. The revolution, we thought, would have to emerge from the factory floor. Many of us actually went to work in factories for months, some for years. What we learned from the workers is that they weren't waiting for us to be their salvation. That's when the theory of false consciousness became popular. Makuza, the idea that the workers didn't know what they truly needed, that they'd been seduced by capitalism, and that we had to explain to them their true needs. That's when we started to question Marx. We cobbled together a new idea, that consciousness had an important role to play in shaping the revolution. That was almost un-Marxist in a way, because in classical Marxism, being determines consciousness, and your revolution can only be achieved when the conditions of reality force you to imagine it. And there was something else within Marx that's always bothered and repelled me. Within the Marxist edifice, there's no single sentence that states simply, thou shall not kill. There's no principle that would forbid you to kill, and kill in large numbers in the name of revolution. This lack of ethics is, of course, a terrible flaw that's inherent in the entire construction. Over and over again, it's what's caused the edifice to collapse.